Get crazy. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo, he get busy, you heard? Nah, my son really getting nervous. What the fuck? They got cameras and shit. Nah, I already know. Come on, man. I already know. Let's get it. This one don't talk to bro easy. Yo, Ash, run it back. What, 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 this is what I've been waiting for. I'm waiting for what this is well like, anticipated like, right here. You hear yeah. me? You, you raising your kids right now, right? Absolutely. Definitely got custody of both of my kids right now. It's not on papers, but I got them. You know, my baby moms was you know, going through something in life, so I felt like as a father, I was going to step in and, and take that responsibility of being a full-time dad. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it, it ain't stop me from coming outside. It don't stop me from, from getting to my money. It's just a, another role. When I come home from work, I got another job. I already got that. That means that's job number three. You know, I'm a rapper, so when I go to work, I go to nine to five. That's my nine to five. I come home and be a rapper because I got to come home and write my music. Now, when I come home, I got to be a full-time dad also. So, that's three jobs for me. Lucky number three. Ain't, ain't no problem with me. But let me pour some of this cognac <laughs> champagne. This Pierre right here. You hear? Because this is it. This is my new favorite drink. Shout out to Real Easy. You're going to make it work. But yeah, other than that, you know, it's something different. New, new endeavor. That's all. So, what made you start rapping? Uh, I just like hearing myself. Honestly, you know, we gonna get honest. I like I like hearing myself. I sound good doing it. Then it's like I started hearing a lot of bullshit music. Like you be hearing shit that you don't make no sense, but they getting all the publicity, all the popularity. So it's like you know what? Let me let me try it. I actually sound good doing it. it, it then it became a profession for me. It's like alright, now I can take it serious now because I sound good. I'm getting good feedback from it. I'm making sense while I'm while, while I'm doing it. Why not? So you think that you could get signed from it? Absolutely. I feel like if I if I keep pushing, keep striving, keep staying consistent, keep dropping heat after heat after heat, of course. Come on, you, you can't stop the inevitable. I'm fired. I'm definitely gonna get there. Definitely gonna get there. So what makes you different? What makes you different from the artist today? I don't drill rap. I don't drill rap and I talk. And anything that's on my music, I can back it up. I can fully back it up. I can pull out receipts for it. So everything you talk about is it's real, real organic. organic. So what happens when that run out? It's never gonna run out. How can it run out? It's my life. I'm talking real shit. This is everything I'm going through. I went through so many things that people don't know. How can it run out? I could always come out with something else that I got in my closet that happened to me or something that I did, something that I, I, I've seen that I was a part of. It's never gonna run out when it's real. It only runs out when it's fabricated because now you gotta look for somebody else's story to tell. So you said you said that you didn't grow up with your. Uh with your moms? I mean, you didn't grow up with your pops. Uh, I grew up with my mother. I grew up as a, in, in a house with, with my mom. I mean, I seen my pops. My pops was around, but my mother is the, the primary parent in my life. Like, that was the person I could go to at all times. Like, my father wasn't really there. My father never came to a basketball game, believe it or not. And, so and my you, father's located in Brooklyn. So you not having your father in your life, if I may ask. Sure. Absolutely. How did that make you a better father? It made me a better father because it, 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 it showed me what not to do when I got my own. It showed me what not to do. It showed me, all right, money, money can make you happy, but time is precious. Time is valuable. Time is something you can't get back. Money, you could, you could waste a dollar today and go outside and find $20. But this 10 minutes that I'm spending with you right now, kicking this knowledge to you, this giving you this unconditional love, that 10 minutes could have saved you from doing something negative or could have took your mind off of whatever you was going through in life, you understand? Like, I feel like time is something that people underappreciate when it comes to parenting. People think it's, it's always the fashion, the, the clothes, the games, the what I could do for you. It's more so of the, what I can give you. I'm gonna give you this love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that nobody ain't gonna love you more than your dad is, you feel me? Despite how everybody act like they love you, I'm gonna show it to you unconditionally on an everyday basis without you having to own me anything. So you think that um, the polarity of a man and a woman help, could have helped shape you to be a better man or you was going to be who you were regardless? I don't think nothing could have made me more than the man I am right now. I think this is just something that was just set for me. Like me, me being born, I was born to be a leader, born to be the man I am right now. So rather I would have had my father or not, it would have, I, I don't think life would have been for me differently because I took the necessary steps to be self-made. 
So would have fallen in my life or not, I still would have been self-made. Because I, I believe in creating my own destiny. And I was doing that since I was a kid. I already knew that. Like, I right, nobody is going to be able to live my life for me but me. So let's not, let me not base my life on how everybody else wants me to live my life. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. Because at the end of the day, I got to live it. You, you, you believe in fate or destiny? I believe in both. I believe in a little bit of fate because in order, in order for, you, you have to believe. You have to believe. And then for destiny, it's just like, it's, it's something that you, 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 put, you put bigger pictures to. So you could start from something small, that'd be the faith. The faith would be the, let me pray for this, let me, let me, let me go reach that. No, do you believe in fate? Faith. Fate. Fate. Fate or destiny. Fate is like. Oh, fate is like, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. what you believe in. Yes, I believe in it. So fate or destiny? Fate. Why? I take fate because that's more blunt. It's more upfront. Destiny could be painted. It could be painted differently. Fate is just something that's just signed and sealed. It's it's pretty much like a when they, like like parenting. Either you're gonna do it or you're not. You could think about doing it. You could you could act like you're gonna do it. But in all reality, you have to do it. If you want to be considered a great parent, you had to do it. So it could be either a do or a don't. Fate is straight to the point. Whether you're going to do it or not. I'd rather it be straight to the point. I don't have time for the iffiness, the wondering. Let me know what it is from then. How do you know if somebody truly loves you or not? They're going to show it. It's, it's, it's not even the, the in front of me. I want to see what you can do behind my back. That's the love I need. I need the... I don't want to tell you I'm going through something. I want you to know it. Like, oh, I he ain't, he ain't, I, in my, in my ways, you know, I, I smoke a million miles per hour. I always got a jar full of weed. I always got everything I need. So not even that, I'm just using that as a, as a, as a synonym or as a, as a comparison. Because it's like, people could, you could be around somebody and they won't know that you don't got no weed in your pocket. Or you always, they won't know that you don't, that you're not situated. Just because you are around them and the time is going good. But everybody just passing you bunk. They don't see you not rolling up your own weed. It'll take that one person in the country to be like, oh, no, nah, he ain't got the jaw today. The jaw ain't out. Let me go pull up on him and let me go pull him to the side and give him some weed to roll up in front of everybody else. That's the real love because it's like, I, right, he know that you ain't got it. That's love to know that somebody's reading you. Somebody's trying to fully understand you outside of the, what you're telling them. So, you know, love is, love is shown. Love is not given. It's shown. I can tell you I love you right now every day. I can tell you I love you, I love you, I love you, bro. I love you, bro. But what am I really showing you? I'm not really showing you anything. How's Rilla as a as a significant other? How's Rilla as a parent? And how's Rilla as a friend? Rilla as a friend, I'm just loyal. I'm loyal to the core. Loyalty is loyalty's a must, and nothing is over that. I got it tatted. You feel me? Loyalty's a must. There's nothing over that. I'm loyal to my kids. I'm loyal to my real friends, which means you can call me. I'm not the friend that's gonna bust it up with you every day. I'm not the friend that you could that, that, that you could call every time you, you're in drama. I'm the friend you could call for drama. I'm the friend you could call when you broke. I'm the friend you could call when you need to talk about your mental. I'm the friend that's gonna get your mental back in, in, in progress. I'm the friend where you say, yo, my girl just kicked me out the crib. I don't got nowhere to stay. I'm about to go to the telly. I'm gonna say, nah, I got a room for you to come sleep in my crib. You feel me? I'm that friend. I'm that friend that if you going through life problems, I'm there to help you. I'm not only there to help you money-wise. I'm there to help you when, when shit get rough, when you don't got nobody to count on and your family's counting you out. Rilla's gonna, you can count Rilla in. So I'm, I'm that friend. I'm not the friend that's just gonna be outside with you, busting up, taking pictures, laughing, joking every day. No, I got real problems. How's, I'm Rilla, how's Rilla as a significant other? I'm, I'm affectionate. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, I'm charming. I like to show my things off. I open doors. I hold bags. You feel me? Like I, I make sure I show my 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 queen off because I, um the way she looks represents me. If she looks happy and strong, then anybody else is gonna know that she she's being guided by a strong man. As well as a dad. Me as a dad, I'm I'm everything. I'm the aggressive one. I'm the mean one. I'm the loving one. I'm the spending money one. I'm the one you don't want to look at sometimes. I'm everything. My kids love me. My kids hate me. But that's that's a part of parenting. I'm not your friend. I guess I, I, we, we can be friends, but I'm not your friend. We are parents. I love you, but at the end of the day, you're going to know that 
daddy is nothing to play with. When daddy say this, that means that. You know how in most, in most households, it's what the mom say? That's because the dad is not there. If the dad was there, then the dad word, the dad word will orchestrate in everything. You understand me? And that's how it is with moms. My word means everything. My kid, I could say something, my kid's going to get scared. Their mother's a strong female, but it, does, it has nothing to do with me. Everything I say is going to run my kids because they already know daddy is nothing to play with. Yes, daddy loves us, but daddy is not our friend. Daddy is daddy. We go to daddy to play, confide in him. But when daddy say this, that means daddy, it, mean it needs to get done. What does being strong mean to you? Being strong to me meaning just being able to hold your composure in, in tough times. Not being able to fold when everybody else is counting you out. To be strong is... Is to be strong is just to be strong. Like, you know, like when when people try to pick your feathers, it's, it's, it's knowing when to walk away. Knowing when to say, you know what, maybe this guy right here, he, he don't really know about me. Let me just walk away from the situation. Being strong is able to be on top of everything, to stay focused. That's strong. Because when, when, when you're when you weak-minded, you, you, you sidetrack a lot. When you're strong-minded, you already know I got my eye on that right there. Rather anybody is trying to derail me, I'm going to stay on track. Tunnel vision. If rap doesn't work, what do you, what do you see yourself doing? If rap don't work, I just see myself being a great dad. If rap don't work, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting older right now. So I got different, I got other endeavors set up. Like I'm about to, I got traffic cop. I got the traffic cop I'm about to be, I'm looking into. So, you know, I'm looking into different different endeavors, different fields outside of my comfort zone. So if rap don't work, I still have different careers that I, I can fall back on and, and still be good and still live. I'm still going to make music, but I still got other things I can fall back on. I got a career right now working in. So if rap don't work, I, who's to say? I can still be where I, what I am right now and still make money. Is music a hobby or priority? It's a hobby for me right now. It's a hobby only because very selected people get seen. It's, rapping is more of a popularity thing. I'm not a popular person. I'm a behind the scenes person. So behind the scenes people is harder to be seen because you behind the scenes. You understand? Like, so I use it as a hobby. I use it as something when, 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 when my mind is cluttered or I feel like I want to go beat somebody up. I go, you know what? I'm going to create. I'm going to write a song. I'm going to use that as, it's therapeutic for it's me. Illegal. It's therapeutic for me. It's, it's, a, it's a defense mechanism for me. When I'm going through things in life, I go in the crib, write a song. I heard you say something. I heard you say something before, right? We was chilling on D Block, and um, you was like, you kind of touched on it earlier. I'm gonna ask you again. Mm -hmm. And you was like, I was a little pussy before, but you know, I'm not pussy now. Like you know what I'm saying? I, like so. Yeah, I was. But, no, no, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Before, before you even answer that, mm -hmm. but I thought it was dope that you admitted that because oh, yeah. you overcame it. Yeah. So just explain that to me, like what that it's, meant. It's obstacles. You know, when I was in junior high school, I was a, I was a punk. I'm not afraid to say that. That was when I was 10, 11, 12, 13. Like I said, I didn't have a dad. I didn't have a father. I had a mother. My mother was a brawler, but picture me coming to my mother telling her kids is picking on me. I'm not, I can't bring my mother to a fight with guys. Just something I had to deal with. You understand? Like, yes, I was a punk. Nobody never put their hands on me. But as far as like people telling me, oh, move away from here, get away from here, get out of here, run. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I was a scared little kid because I didn't have the proper support system of, of a male to tell me, like, nigga, put your back into it. Put your hands up. Throw your hands up. You feel me? Don't let nobody do this. My mother always told me, if you hit, if you get hit, hit back. That's what I knew. I never got hit. So I never, I, never, I never was trained to react. I was always trained to play defense. My mother always told me, don't hit first, hit back. That, but that's coming from a female. You understand? A male is going to tell you what? If you get into a situation, boy, you better, you better, you better pop. But as a female, they looking for the no. We want you to just be good, be be a, a good Samaritan, but defend yourself. You understand? So that's how I was raised. I was raised to get hit first, you hit back. So nobody never hit me, so I never had to perform until I got to high school. When I got to high school, situation happened. He was throwing milk. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a speeder. He was throwing milk. The guy in front of me thought I hit him with the milk, which was so ironic because I'm right behind him. He swung on me because I was talking too much. He punched me. Boom. I'm like, oh, shit. Now, it's, now it clicked. Your mother said, you get hit, hit back. Now I swing back. Now I get the best of him. Now I'm feeling good. And now I'm in my mind, I'm, no, I'm like, damn, all these years I'm getting punked and bullied and I really know how to fight. 
So now I put that into fast motion. It's like now I'm now I want to seek out all the bullies. Now let me. Who's the next bully? Who are you tough? Or you was bullying that person last week? I seen it. Oh, come now, you gotta come fight me. And now I'm getting the best of all the bullies. So now my reputation is changing. Now I'm 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 getting the oh he's the fighter. He could play ball, but he's the fighter. Yeah, I fight well because I, I'm anti-bully. I fight bullies. I, I'm I'm a, I'm a problem solver. I don't start problems. Let's talk about it. The problem solver never caused the problem. I'm the one in call because they don't want to go to war without. <laughs> How wrong is that? <laughs>